At Kroger, shopping with pickup and delivery is the same as shopping in-store. Same low prices, deals, and rewards on the same high-quality items. It's one small click for groceries, one big win for busy families everywhere. Start your cart today at Kroger.com. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Save big on your favorites with the buy five or more, save a dollar each sale. Simply buy five or more participating items and save a dollar each with your card. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Welcome to 15 Days of Festive Fear, day number seven. And happy Christmas to all of those who celebrate it. And if you don't, I just hope you have a lovely day in general. I've got five spooky stories for you today. And the last story comes from February the 2nd, 2021. And story number one comes from Stephanie. I come from a family of sensitives. And I really started understanding my gift as I got older. To start, I was very young shopping for furniture for my sister and I was a very adventurous child so I decided to venture on my own. I was on the third level and noticed a rocking chair moving back and forth. I was curious and walked over. There was a man sitting and he was wearing a military uniform. It was bloody and dusty and I asked why he was there. I was about eight years old and the man didn't come off as mean, scary or ghostly. I knew you shouldn't talk to strangers, but he was kind and asked me if I needed help. We had a conversation and I wanted to ensure he was okay. I heard my mother running upstairs in a panic and she was worried and took my hand and we went downstairs. She didn't see him. As we were running, she asked me who I was talking to and I told her that I was talking to Arthur. We continued to run down the stairs and my mom asked the owner if there was anyone working upstairs as she didn't believe me. The owner replied that no, we were the only people in there. He told my mom the first day opening the store, he ran out with the money in the cash register and the doors unlocked, he was so scared, as he saw many people walking through the walls heading to the stairs. I could tell my mom was breathing heavy and he continued to tell my mom that the building was used as a morgue and he never stayed past certain times. That's when it all started. I was drawn to that building ever since. I needed to help him and I wasn't quite sure how. Two years later, they bulldozed the lot and they created new businesses. I always think of Arthur. I think of the fight and the life that he gave up. It helped me to learn about the American Civil War and what role the town I live in played. For those who struggle with paranormal and believing, I lost my grandparents quite young on both sides. I have two older sisters and my oldest sister was working and my other sister and I decided to go and visit her to get brunch. I walked to the car and I felt a sudden stabbing feeling. I kept walking thinking it was nothing and as I got closer to the car the pain got sharper and tears rolled down my face. I decided not to go as after the pain I had a bad feeling about going. About 20 minutes after my sister left, the fire department called and my sister was in an accident. She walked away from the accident with a sore neck and a couple of bruises. She was lucky. After looking at the pictures, the passenger side was completely wrecked and I would have been dead instantly. I'm not someone who believes in God, but I do believe that day my guardian angels were watching me and keeping me and my sister safe and alive. That's the second story that we've had recently about car accidents and guardian angels. There must be something in it. I also find it mad that we have all these children that are just seeing all this shit all the time. Do you still see them as an adult? Like, have you held on to that sense of the otherness? Or did it disappear as you got older? It's just just mad, really, isn't it? It's just mad. And I do, and I always say this, and I feel like I'm repeating myself on every podcast, but I do like to think that we all have a guardian angel, regardless of what your religious beliefs are. You know, I just would like to like to think that we all have somebody looking out for us. And story number two comes from Anonymous. 
A few weeks ago, I was on patrol on a night shift with a new rookie who I was training up. It was maybe 3am or so, and we were driving down a quiet street when I saw an old man standing on the pavement under a streetlight. He was wearing a long coat and a brown hat, and he was standing totally still just staring into the road. I thought maybe he was lost or may have had dementia and wandered outside or something, so I turned the car around and went back to see if he needed help. However, when I turned around, he was nowhere to be seen. There were no other vehicles around who could have picked him up and I drove up and down the street to see if he had walked off and there was no trace of him. Want an even weirder story? I attended an address where a man had tragically completed suicide with a shotgun. It happened to be on the same street where one of my colleagues from the next shift lived. I was standing outside on the street when that officer came out of his house and we exchanged a friendly wave. Later on that day, when he came in to start his shift as mine was finishing, he came over to ask me which of his neighbours it was who had died. When I told him, he went white in the face and looked totally shocked. He asked if I was sure and I said yes. When I inquired into his reaction, he said he had seen that man walking around the outside of the house while we had been there, so he assumed it was someone else. The man had been dead for a good 12 hours at least at that point. He was very distinctive looking with long hair, a beard and a particular uniform, so he could not have been mistaken for somebody else. Also, I would challenge anybody to deal with a horrendous bloody scene like that and then have to deal with the grief-stricken family, let alone the paranormal stuff. Any kind of police stories or first responder stories are always the episodes that get the most positive feedback I think they are the episodes that people love I think because of the air of the credible witness and we have had multiple stories over the years of people who have seen people after they've died not realizing that that person was dead like they've seen them going about their daily business or seen them they've appeared to them and then suddenly they find out afterwards that that person had been dead and in reality the end of that story is very true. Sometimes real life is much more horrific and terrifying than the paranormal. And I will always be in awe of first responders, whether that's police officers, uh, paramedics, the fire brigade, whoever it is, those people who are first on the scene to these horrific incidences, whatever, whatever those instances are, and then having to manage a grieving family as well. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty harrowing stuff without the paranormal on top of that. And story number three comes from Christina. I've always felt like there's something more to our world than what we can see. Energies that are residually attached to people and places definitely exist. And I feel like I can really notice them in certain spots in the English landscape. I don't know about you, But I often look out the window on train rides or long car journeys and wonder who used to walk where the hedges grow now. How many eyes have looked across where I am now? I also believe, in a way, that you can feel when someone walks over your grave. That superstition around those cold shivers one can experience now and again. And I definitely pay attention to the dark spots in the forest. When I was a kid, around seven or eight, I remember my mum brought my sister and I up to Pendle in Lancashire to have a camping holiday with her lifelong friend. The two of them are huge on walking, and though we hated it as kids, with our adult legs now, my sister and I have grown up to love it too. Now, Pendle is, of course, famous for its witches, sort of like a Salem level of fame in the UK. Round about this time, I think I started to notice dark shapes in the woodlands that we would walk through and imagined them to be cloaked figures that seemed to move closer or further away as we moved through the woodlands. They were likely tricks of the light, but I remember a real sense of dread and presence, like they were observing us. This stayed with me growing up. When my mum remarried, we moved in with our stepdad and his kids in a village called Lee in Dorset. This village, though small, was also steeped in magical history. At the bottom of the village, by a river, was a Ms. Maze, which was rumoured to be a spot where the local coven of witches used to congregate. It is, in fact, the last place in England where a witch was captured, 
and she was killed the next day in the historic town of Dorchester. I only found out this fact as an adult, but it seemed to make sense in a way, as I felt like those energies that I'd felt at Pendle were somehow replicated there, particularly in the woodlands. I never really appreciated until recently how the energies or spirits could be so deeply embedded in the land, and I feel like it was an amazing twist of fate that my family ended up in this area. Where I went to school, a town called Sherburne, was also known for paranormal happenings. Sir Walter Raleigh's ghost was said to roam the castle grounds, ghostly monks at Sherburne Abbey, plenty of ancient Tudor houses and inns, where I'm sure there are a ghost story or two. There was even rumoured to be an ancient plague pit beneath where the train station now stands. It is an ancient landscape, so of course you'd think that folk would have their stories. You just have to hope that the stories they tell don't have consequences. Fast forward to my teenage years. I was 13 and my mum had split up with that guy, and we had moved out of Lee to a small town outside of Sherburne called Milbourne Port. I had begun to dabble in a Wiccan practice and had been reading into candle magic and love spells, the kind of thing that you'd expect of a young girl. In a way, though I don't think I was casting anything serious, I also think that I could have been attracting energies that I didn't know what to do with. Also, to be predicted at my age, a friend and I were going to meet up to go for runs, which ended up just being five minutes of jogging uphill, followed by 45 minutes of walking and chatting. At the very least, we were exercising in some form. My house was sat at the edge of the village, looking straight out into the fields and ridgeway which was covered with a forest that spanned the whole of the hills surrounding the valley. There were several fields leading straight up to the edge of the woods dotted with a line of trees. There was also a wood chip covered bridle path that frequently was used to train racehorses called the gallops. That led right up to the top and over the other side of the hill leaving a small gap in the wall of bark and leaves. So one evening, my friend came to collect me and we went for a run. It was twilight out, and we couldn't see the path in the woods very well, so we took it slowly. By the time we had looped around the woods and back along the top towards the opening of the gallops, there was barely any light. Suddenly, stopping as quickly as it started, there was an almighty racket of howling and dogs barking. It sounded as though a hunt was out, because there was so much noise. We couldn't figure out where it was coming from, and were a little taken aback by how quickly it had stopped, so we just kept walking. As we began down the gallops, a white dog flew through our legs and right down the hill, totally silent, as its blue-white dot faded into the night. What was even more concerning to us was, where did it come from? And where was its owner? A bit scared now, we picked up the pace and marched down the hill keen to get home. As we approached the gate to get back to the fields before the houses, my friend's phone rang. We stopped so that she could talk to her mum, who I think was angry about something. I stepped forward a couple of paces as I waited, and then something caught my eye by the hedgerow. I started trying to focus my eyes through the blocks of black, blue, dark blue and grey that the night was providing. I couldn't tell at first what I was seeing. Something white, sort of head height, emerged from the thorns and leaves ahead. As it came forward, I thought I could see a woman. She was dressed in sheer black robes or dress with really long white hair. I don't remember if I could see her face or not. If I did, I'm sure my mind has blocked it out. I felt overwhelming terror. I couldn't move, I couldn't speak, and I didn't know if my friend could see it too. The woman's dress and hair began to move, and the only way I can describe it is like ribbons. A little like in Deathly Hallows when Voldemort's cloak starts to turn into a sentient tentacle of sorts. She seemed like she wasn't touching the ground anymore. I couldn't see her feet, only the blue of the grass below her. Suddenly she flew at me with unbelievable speed. I can't remember the noise but something tells me it was shrill screaming and somehow muted, like someone screaming behind glass. It was like all of the air left my lungs. The next thing I knew, I was on the ground, flat on my back, 
My friend was kneeling beside me, asking if I was okay. I remember sort of stuttering out, Did you see her? But my friend hadn't seen anything. She helped me to walk home, and I remember later on sitting on my bed in the light of my bedroom as my mum walked around talking about something. I was just staring forwards, too afraid to really speak about what had happened. It took me a while to go for walks there again, even in the daylight. I also have a couple of other events that have happened, but nothing so in-depth. In particular, last year in one of my student houses, I felt it was one of the worst years of my life. I was deeply depressed and anxious, to the point where sometimes I couldn't bear to leave my room. I hated moving around the house because there always seemed to be a very unwelcoming, hostile and static sort of energy. Whether that was because I was the only girl in a nine bed full of guys who clearly didn't like me, or something else, I don't know. But there were times where I would be deeply scared, particularly on the landing above the stairs. One night I was coming up after getting some water from the kitchen. I suddenly heard thundering footsteps on the steps behind me going impossibly fast. It was like something was throwing itself up the stairs after me. And when I turned around, I could have sworn I saw something dark and semi-human crouching on the steps. My boyfriend at the time also told me that he had often seen an old woman standing outside of my room looking at my door. I can't remember if he also said he had seen her in my room, but he is possibly one of the strongest empaths I know and can really sense energies from both the living and the others so I trust him that he saw her. And though I don't think she was threatening, all I know is that since I've moved out, the darkest moments of my depression no longer affect me so badly. And finally, I know that you've discussed dreams and the way spirits can infiltrate them previously. I've just listened to the episode about the woman who was told she was pregnant by the hallway spirit, and I believe it too. A few years ago, a friend from school committed suicide while at university. We weren't best friends, but my heart has been aching about him since, and I wish we could have said goodbye. Recently, I had a dream that I was trying to create a post-apocalypse civilization and was about to stand in a hall of people to speak, when I saw him at a table. I threw my arms out to greet him and he did the same, and the joy I felt was as though I was really seeing him. We caught up and chatted, and I felt such warmth in his presence. I think that he could have shown himself because I was sleeping, but also because my depression was getting bad again. I think that when you're dissociating and less attached to the current world, energies can definitely attach to your vulnerability. But in this case, it was incredibly comforting to me. Though I'm not ready to leave this life yet, I'm less scared of death, because my friend is waiting with open arms. What was that woman in the forest? She sounds like some sort of like nature spirit or like a deity some sort of nature goddess who was like what are you doing in my space you're not supposed to see me you're not supposed to be in my area I do think as well there's things with the land that we don't understand and it might not necessarily be paranormal but I do think that you know showing a reverence and a respect towards the land is really important and when you look at ancient people who worshipped the land who treated the land in a particular way who did everything they could to understand the land it makes you think oh I wonder if they knew more than we did now or if there's some sort of lost knowledge about the land that we just don't understand and the vision of you walking up the stairs with something crawling running after you has just unlocked a childhood fear so thank you today's episode is brought to you by ZocDoc hello do you like scary movies? Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of my whole shtick. Do you like spending hours scrolling on TikTok and diagnosing yourself with various medical conditions as a result? <gasps> You've been watching me. I am here to tell you something, so listen closely. Zocdoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Um, okay, right, um, I'm confused. Is this not meant to be more murdery? More more stabby? Yeah, I, I actually think I've gotten a bit of a bad rep, to be honest. 
and uh, I'm trying a new approach, more more helpful, more human. Wow, weird. But I'm listening. Surprise twists may work for horror movies, but not for medical care. With ZocDoc, there is no alarm and no surprises. Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. I hear what you are saying, but this might be the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Go to ZocDoc.com slash ghost and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash ghost. Today's episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Now, look, I know I've been doing fun, silly ads for HelloFresh at the moment, but I thought I needed to do at least one ad where you could really get an idea of what HelloFresh is all about. Did you know that March is National Nutrition Month and HelloFresh makes it easy to choose delicious dietitian approved meals. Simply look for the dietitian win tag on their menu choices for meals with under 700 calories and with one third less sodium. And those aren't the only options. So you can choose quick cook. You can choose that your box is family friendly, carb smart, protein rich, vegetarian, pork free. There are so many different options to choose from. HelloFresh sends you seasonal recipes that come with ingredients already pre-proportioned so all you have to do is cook and enjoy. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm not a good cook. It's not something that comes naturally to me but let me tell you when I'm getting HelloFresh I, I, feel, like, I feel like I'm Gordon Ramsay, you know. I'm taking pictures of every meal and I'm sending it into the group chat. To be honest, HelloFresh is one of those things that I'm always going to recommend whether I'm advertising for them or not. It's quick, it's easy, it's great for people who maybe aren't very good cooks like me. It's cost effective and it also saves on a ton of waste. So go to HelloFresh.com forward slash Real Life Ghost Stories 60 and use the code Real Life Ghost Stories 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com forward slash Real Life Ghost Stories 60 and use the code Real Life Ghost Stories 60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Today's episode is sponsored by HERS. This time of year, all of the emphasis is always on organising your space, it's always on wellness, it's on spring cleaning, it's on fresh starts. But actually, the most important way to take care of yourself is to take care of your mental health and you can do so at forhers.com. At forhers.com you can get access to real medical providers who can prescribe trusted anxiety and depression medication if it is right for you. The process is 100% online including unlimited check-ins, provider messaging and support along the way. Plus, to make things even simpler, you can get your first month of treatment for just $25 if prescribed. To get started, go to forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers.com slash spring. And I know for some people that getting access to proper mental health care can be a serious source of stress in and of itself. It also can be really difficult to talk to healthcare providers face to face about things like your sexual health, about things like hair loss and about things like your mental health. That is why HERS makes it simple. Get started today at forhers.com slash spring. That's forhers, F-O-R-H-E-R-S dot com slash S-P-R-I-N-G. The offer is only available if prescribed. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. The subscription is required. Additional restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. And story number four comes from Becca. The story I'm about to tell is one of many from my teenage years in a home my parents rented. To set the scene, it's off the road along the edge of the woods. It has a beautiful wraparound porch and was built in 1953. My parents divorced when I was around 15, so my mom moved around a bit and rented different homes. This one in particular felt heavy from the moment I stepped inside. I had always had paranormal experiences as a kid and I was born with a veil of skin over my face or in medical terms a call birth which basically means a part of the amniotic sac covered my face and had to be wiped off. 
Some people believe children who are born this way have supernatural powers. My mom began giving me the grand tour of the home. She walked me through a long hallway with wood panelling and we arrived in what would be my bedroom. It was cold and my windows looked out into the woods behind the home. She took me into the kitchen, living room and our bright pink bathroom. The bathroom only had a wash tub, no shower, so she showed me to the basement which had a shower with one of those creepy wraparound hospital curtains. It felt like my chest was heavy the entire time she was showing me the basement. On the right side there was a room with no door but a wool blanket hanging to act as a door where coal used to be stored. My mom pulled back the heavy wool and I couldn't even step inside. I told her I didn't like the energy and she huffed and said, of course you're feeling something spooky already and disregarded my feelings. It was my first night in the home and I was unpacking my belongings in my new bedroom. I noticed my window sills were full of dead flies and I mean full. I vacuumed them out and didn't really think much of it. After unpacking I was ready for a shower. I went to the creepy basement against my better judgement and started the water. I could feel something watching me. I stared at the bottom of the curtain waiting to see feet run by. The light began to flicker above me and I ran upstairs as fast as I could without even rinsing my shampoo. As the weeks went on I could hear footsteps, things moving and people making noise even when I was home alone. My family kept dismissing me. I finally quit telling them about the things I felt and heard. One night my mom sat me down and asked me to tell her what I had experienced. She told me while home alone she could hear running water. She looked down the hall into the bathroom and could see water exploding from under the sink. She ran to grab a towel but when she made it back to the bathroom it was bone dry and there was no water. She said this happened multiple times. I told her my most recent experience happened in the basement. I was down there alone as my mom had added a couch and TV and children's toys for my siblings in an attempt to make it less chilling. I had dozed off while watching a movie and when I awoke I could feel someone staring at me. I looked to my right and there was a roll of blue paper towels that mechanics use. They were my stepdads. All of a sudden this roll of paper towels fell over and rolled all the way across the floor and stopped in front of me. I started yelling at my brother and he flipped the light switch at the top of the stairs leaving me in the dark. I tried to run to the stairs but nearly tripped over the roll of towels. We soon moved into another home and we were all ready to go. Everyone had been on edge and we all felt angry while inside this home. I was in the basement helping my mom pack up and she needed help moving some decor from the old coal room behind the wool blanket. I never noticed but in the concrete someone had written the date into it before it dried when they built the home. The 27th of the 7th 53. Oddly enough, my birthday is the 27th of the 7th, 93. We packed up and never looked back. Even without the ghostly stuff like the footsteps and the water and all of the feelings and the lights turning on and off, that basement sounds horrific. So I was imagining it in my head as I was reading the story and honestly, it it sounds like a torture chamber. Like it sounds like an apps. No. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be there either. I'd be like, sorry, ma'am. Well, I'm not living here. I'm not having a shower down in the basement. No way. And I know basements are more common in homes in the US. I understand that. They're not as common here in the UK. I have lived in a house with a basement. It was pretty creepy, but it was not levels. It was not this level of creepy. I mean, that is scary. And story number five comes from Suzanne. My husband Penn was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. He never smoked a day in his life, but that's how things roll. He fought for three years before succumbing to the cancer. His body finally gave out and he passed away two days after his February 17th birthday. As you can imagine, after he passed, things were quite hectic. Hospice workers in and out, forms to complete, people to call, etc. That night, I finally fell asleep in our bed. I had been staying on the couch for the last few days to be near him in the hospice bed. Penn was super smart. A genius, really. His IQ was in the 170s. 
As I was waking up from my fitful sleep, I had a vision of Penn. He was in our bathroom doorway at the foot of our bed. He didn't talk to me per se, but I understood him. He was holding an ordinary playing card, the three of hearts, towards me. And he said, Do you see this three? Of course I do, I replied. He then turned the card over so the back was towards me and said, Do you still see the three? I replied a little exasperated, Of course not. He then said, I'm just like this three now. I'm still here, you can't see me, but I'm just on the other side. For me, that was the most beautiful explanation of the afterlife. Never in a million years would I have come up with something so eloquent, but that was my pen. He would take a very complex idea, mull it around in that big brain of his, and spit out something we mere mortals could understand. And Penn was not a believer in the afterlife. We had had many lively discussions about it. I'm a recovering Catholic, as I like to say, and do not ascribe to any particular faith, but I do believe we continue on. He just said we die and that's that. I would point out that we are all energy and energy doesn't end. After I fully woke up, I took a shower and came back to the room. There I saw a closed box of playing cards on the far end of my dresser. Penn and I hardly ever played cards. We had no kids and I was alone in the house and yet here was this deck of cards. Laughing, saying it can't be, I walked over and opened the box and the top card was the three of hearts. It's been four years this month since I lost Penn and I still miss my husband and my best friend. I was comforted with Penn's explanation to me. I'm not sure if it's true, but I know one thing for sure. I never put that deck of cards there. It's very fitting that that story should come today on Christmas Day because I know that a lot of people will be really struggling with having lost loved ones and Christmas is a really particularly difficult time for people who have lost loved ones. So I think that story will probably bring comfort and will resonate with a lot of people. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Stephanie, Anonymous, Christina, Becca and Suzanne for sending in your stories. If you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast.gmail.com. You can also check out our website, reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And on that note, I shall see you tomorrow. Take as little as three minutes to see if you could save on motorcycle insurance with Progressive. Come on, you've spent more time than that trying to name your bike. Hmm, how about the Crusher? I guess it's not really crushing anything. The Silver Bolt? No. Oh, oh, what about Pepper? Mysterious. Is it a pet or a condiment? Surprise! It's a motorcycle. Uh, no, that's stupid. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. So, how does it feel when you play Roll Up to Win with Tim Hortons? Buy a hot or cold beverage using the Tim's app and find out. Roll in the app for a chance to win prizes ranging from free coffee and donuts to a Universal Orlando Resort vacation or a sweet car. Oh, don't forget the TV. And this year, every roll is a shot at a $1,000 daily giveaway drawing for two $500 prizes. Roll up to win and get treated by Tim's. 
No purchase necessary. Account registration required. 50 US and DC. 18 plus entered by 42 23. See rules at rolluptowin.com for free entry of full details. Void in Florida and where prohibited.